This is hard work. Right, are you going to um, No, no, I'm just getting really excited about the cakes and the ice and stuff. It's because I've managed to do those little pipey bits. Like, they're not perfect, but I'm just absolutely chuffed that I did them. Um, and I was just thinking, like, should I try and save up and go to Cordon Bleu school? <laughs> I really want to learn more, like, French pastry stuff. <sighs> that would be the dream, wouldn't it? That's what I'm going to try and do. That's, that's my, um, my lifelong ambition. Yeah, that's a good one. These look incredible. I'm so pleased with how everything's turned out. I'm just having a good cake day. And um, what really helps is it's getting to that time of year where butter just softens. Yeah. Oh, it's so much easier. And um, it's so much better. But yeah, I'm absolutely chuffed with how stuff's going. Couldn't be more chuffed. <laughs> Guys, it's Vic's birthday today. Hooray! He's managed to keep that off the vlogs. I did put a little comment on the last one. <laughs> Make sure everybody knew. <laughs> yeah. You might be able to edit your way out of some situations, but you can't edit your age. <laughs> Own it! That is a lot of buttercream. Oh, that is good. Mm. I hadn't tried. Mum's made a ginger sponge. Mm. And she's trying to get away from camera. <laughs> <laughs> so she's shuffling away. <laughs> Well, we've done a really bad job at covering the weekend. It's impossible. But it was it was a great time, wasn't it? We had a laugh. And it's been really busy. Yeah. Thank you everybody for coming down. It's so cool that we get to do that we get to meet people. It's ridiculously yeah. cool that this is like becoming a living. Mm-hmm. Now we've got a massive cleanup job to do. To do a finger click transition. Yeah. Let operation clean up. Commence. Hopefully that looks different. <laughs> <laughs> Those guys are noisy neighbours, but... <laughs> This morning, there, for this leg of the journey, we're just going to poke into there for a little bit of water, tapa. But then we're going back out and down there, down those 16 locks. How's things going? Good, just making some breakfast. Picking up some apples, throwing them around. It's a nice day, it's cold isn't it? Yeah. But lovely sunshine. It's woken us right up. This lock flight that we're going down, a flight of 16 locks, is only open two days a week, Tuesday and Thursday. Today's Tuesday. So we're going to go all the way down all 16 locks with both boats, hopefully. Just lining up for the first of a few locks. Well, we've got some help with this first lock, which is great. Joe and William are going to the park and I'm about to start our descent. This is pretty deep. Considering we're going down 16 of them. Well, we're off to a pretty good start. Joe's already set the next lock for me. 
Hi William. This is fantastic. This must be my lucky day. Fantastic, thank you. We've got, I've got some unofficial help on this lock as well. Unofficial help is that term. Um, but it's brilliant. Oh. oh, fantastic. This part of what I absolutely love about the canals is that it attracts people who are here just purely for social reasons. Like they don't have a boat, it's just a nice place to come along and meet people. And locks, and especially lock flights, they're like the social hubs of the canals. <laughs> so it's great. These guys, Mark and William, have just come down and uh, just just to help out and meet people and enjoy a bit of sunshine. Luckily today, these locks are deep. Over these 16 locks, we're going to descend 70 meters. We're going down, baby. Going my unofficial helpers. These guys are fantastic. I think we're at lock number 11. I haven't even been counting them because I, I don't feel like I've done one lock yet. This has been an absolute breeze. penultimate lock, about to go into the last lock. Thanks guys. My helpers have stayed with me all this way. So I've got to say, this is the easiest lock fight for me that I've ever done. Cool. Found a mooring just directly below that last lock. So now I'm going to go back up and see if I can help Java and her dad get Holly down. I can see Joe and her dad just coming down that lock so I'll just get this one ready for them. Pressed up for zero. I thought we could press up with zero. Okay. Cool. So we just pressed it up like this for the time being. We're leaving. We're leaving Vic on his arm to cover some ground. We're only dragging him down. He's staying here. <laughs> Yeah, so the plan is I'm going to go back to my mum and dad's with William while Vic um, moves the boats because we're going to go down the Peak Forest Canal, well Vic's going to, to the end and then hook a right onto the Huddersfield Narrow Canal. But we've heard that it's not like there's not that many places to stop um, along the way so it might be best just to blast through and there's a few locks. Um, so I'm going to go and Vic's going to move 
both the boats and we'll see him back in two days time and I'll get the train to wherever you are. But in the meantime, I'm gonna try and get as much work on the cookbook done as I possibly can. It's coming right to the end of it, like the, of the design stage, but I'm doing it all myself. So I don't really um, trust myself that I've done it. Well, I've just got to go through it all, basically make it look as professional and nice as I possibly can. Um, but it's, I love doing it, but I, I really want it to be really nice and good. So those guys are off. They're going to go back to Joe's parents' house and uh, that leaves me in charge of boat moving operations. We're trying to open the cafe boat, not next weekend, but the weekend after, in Upper Mill. It's like 21 locks away and some miles away or something. So basically we're just gonna try and get into position for that. But it's just much easier to move boats, especially when you don't know when you can moor up or anything like that it's kind of almost easier to do it as one person than as two people and a toddler. When those guys go, it's good in a way because I feel like, you know, we're being productive and we're not living just so much on the boats and stuff like that, which is a good thing, I guess. But I do miss them a lot, like quite quickly as well. And we've done this before, so I kind of know now how much I miss them. And um, I don't even have the initial optimism. <laughs> I think we're coming up to an aqueduct. I've seen pictures of this and it looks incredible from below, but like most aqueducts, when you're actually on it, you know, it doesn't really look like much. As we're travelling up this way, we're sort of getting a little bit more into the sort of outskirts of Manchester. I think, judging by the map, things get a little bit more urban and stuff like that, which is kind of part of the reason why we thought maybe this would be a good couple of days for William and Joe to skip and just for me to do on my own. But I do feel a bit bad that they're missing out on, you know, seeing lambs and stuff. Coming up to a tunnel. My aim for the end of this evening is to have both boats kind of poised in position to turn on to another canal. That's where the wave of locks begins. So I'm just putting in an extra sort of couple of little hours now so that then, yeah, tomorrow morning I can just start locking myself up. Just going under the M60 motorway. Definitely getting a little more urban. And basically now I'm doing the same journey again with zero. <laughs> I won't put you through it all again, but the sunset looks nice, doesn't it? And for dinner, I've got a cheese and ham sandwich and a San Pellegrino lemonade from the cafe. I've made it but it's like 10 o'clock at night now. Um, I think I'm just gonna go to bed, which is gonna be strange. It feels a lot more like camping for some reason when I'm on my own. And then yeah, tomorrow I'm gonna get on the other canal and start the locks, 21 locks to do with two boats. It's a new dawn, it's a new day, and it'll be a new canal. When I go up, I've got a couple of miles to do left on this canal. And then when I go up to Ashton and turn right, I'll be on the Huddersfield Narrow Canal for the first time for me. Um, quite excited about it even though it's supposed to be quite a sort of problematic canal difficult to navigate and stuff a bit shallow and 
just a bit tricky. And I think historically it's always been that way a little bit from what I've read. That um, it was kind of built on a real budget, built quite quickly. It goes across the Pennines. So there's a lot of locks involved. And uh, to save money on the size of reservoir they had to build, they built the locks a little narrower than they would have done even on a, a narrow canal. That's why it's called the Huddersfield Narrow, is because it this one is especially narrow. Usually narrow locks I think are about seven foot wide or were built to seven foot wide. These ones were built to uh, six foot ten inches wide. So that is just enough to get this boat in, hopefully. But we'll have to find that out when we get there. What a suspicious looking mummers guarding their nest. Bit of industry for you there, making a classic factory noise. When you're single handing a swing bridge or lift bridge in this case, I've got a tie there front of the boat up to this bollard because once I lift the bridge I won't be able to go back over to that side to get the boat. Cool. As I went through the bridge just then, I think I the, hit a big block of wood with the propeller and it just blocked the propeller and like straight away stalled the engine so a little trip down the weed hatch after this see anything that's down there but I'm gonna have to get my hand down see if I can feel anything it's gonna be something quite big I can see it now it is a massive block of wood I don't know if you can see that down there I'm gonna try and very gently tap it off with the mallet <laughs> weirdly it sank I guess some wood sinks, doesn't it? But it's off the propeller. Well, that was a little more eventful than I thought it was going to get before the first lock, <laughs> to be honest. I did consider having a little cup of tea, taking advantage of that little stop and using it as a pit stop but I'm going to carry on and maybe have a little chill out after the first six locks. That can be my reward. So here we are and I think maybe I've got my turning to do now. There is like the oldest wooden boat <laughs> you've ever seen just placed sort of directly in an awkward position of this quite sort of tight turn so I basically sort of chickened out of the turn. I started kind of reversing obviously to not hit that boat uh, and then I just kind of remembered what's just happened and thought oh, if my engine just cuts out now I'm definitely going to just obliterate that boat. <laughs> so basically I've just chickened out of this turn and I'm just going to do it like really slowly and probably with the pole. So that's it, we're on the Huddersfield Narrow Canal. The next town up the Huddersfield Narrow is called Staley Bridge and uh, the plan is we'll get through Staley Bridge and go to a little village outside of it called Upper Mill. That's where we'll hang our hat for a couple of weeks.
first lock on the Huddersfield Narrow, but let's see how it treats us. I just went back to close that lock gate and now we're going through this kind of long skinny bit which is kind of what I imagined for the Huddersfield Narrow to be honest. That's the first lock down. It was a bit of a tinker. Now I'm just coming out of lock number two but I'm being a bit careful because this is a really deep lock and the pound, which is the lot of water that's above this lock, is quite a small pound. And I've noticed that the level, the water level in this pound is now very low. That's the water level I'm talking about. It's dropped quite a lot. I would usually sort of moor up at the lock landing now, temporarily, and go back and close the gate. But I think we're in real shallow water here. The boat's barely moving. So I'm gonna carry on going to the next lock. I can see it, it's only just up there. And then I'll run back from that lock and close this gate, if I can get there. Made it. So now I'm gonna empty this lock. Now I'll go and close that gate of the last lock that I kind of abandoned and then uh, we'll get back to this. Someone's had his first haircut. My mum has just taken William. So I'm gonna try and get some of the cookbook done. This is a little sneak preview. That's exciting. It's exciting to show a little bit of it. I've I've heard little bits from Vic, but I think it's quite a challenging section of canal. And it feels really bad not to be helping, but I know that if I was there, it's not helping because I've got to look after William. So like things have changed quite a lot um, in terms of moving the boat. So we'll see how it goes, but um, it sounds like there's definitely easier canals to be on. That tree just took the chimney off the boat, which I should have sort of seen coming, to be honest. But at least I know I made a little mental marker of where it fell. And water level's low in this pound as well, so it might be that I can do another little canoe recovery. Yes. I've just had a confidence boost in this mission because I found this. Sea Searcher magnet, it's fantastic. It's basically a really strong magnet on a string. And uh, to be honest, this has happened before. That chimney blew off once in a storm as we were going along. And uh, this Sea Searcher, it's got a track record, 100% success rate of recovering that chimney. So I'm feeling boosted by that. I still remember where it fell. I'm gonna go out in the canoe and let's see what happens. Okay, my water bottle also fell in, so let's do the easy one. Pretty cool. Now, the spot I'm headed for is just under that sort of overhanging stump kind of thing. Okay, attempt number one. Okay, attempt number one didn't work. It's quite windy, so... I can't, can't believe I haven't found it yet. It's not exactly a needle in the haystack. It's like a, the world's biggest narrowboat chimney. The world's narrowest canal.
feels like I might have something. Pulling me somewhere towards there. I think I'd know, wouldn't I? Wishful thinking. Do your thing. Find me a chimney. I can't give up. got something. Oh, I've just lost it. Oh, the wind is like making this hard. Harder than it needs to be. Just thinking, I was definitely going to have to get in. Oh gosh, I'm pleased I didn't. Man, this is turning out to be an exhausting morning. It's it's 11 o'clock in the morning, and all that's happened, and a good hour of has been doing this. Oh man! Well, I'm sure there's a moral to that story, but I don't know what it is. Keep your chimneys on, something like that. Epic, absolutely epic journey so far. And we've done three locks, and the Huddersfield Narrow has a total of about a million locks on it. <laughs> oh man, okay. Just when I was starting to think we could do without the canoe. Maybe that's what the moral of the story is. You can't. <gasps> Man. Looks quite nice there in the canoe. Maybe I should get a chimney for the canoe. No. That's enough chimneys. <laughs> I think this is a very much travelled canal. <laughs> I'm getting that feeling. It's pretty wild. It is pretty narrow. And it's also pretty shallow. And let's face it, so far it's been hard work. <laughs> so, so we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. I'm hoping for some uneventful next few locks, to be honest. really shallow and I was going so slowly but still managed to like absolutely get stuck on the way into this lock <laughs> how is it this stuck I don't know how I've gotten this stuck 
in the end. I had to sort of get across the canoe, uh, abandon the boat and sort of use the canoe to get onto the side and then go up to the lock and let a lock full of water out to get in, to, to sort of get off the shallow bit. Now I'm just stuck on another shallow bit, I don't think I can get in this lock. Man, this, this canal is hard work. I'm going in. I had to let some water out of this lock in the end. I've just come up that lock and I've kind of emerged in Staley Bridge. Seems really nice. Um, but we're passing through. I did another lock that I didn't film much of. It's sort of the canal's changing again now, back to sort of countryside vibes. Yeah, it's nice. I'm going under a pylon. It was quite weird to do. Who dares look into the eye of the pylon? The bins, I think they're up here. I've just moored up. There's like moorings here for this facilities point. Because I've got the canoe at the back, I go real slow on these paddles and I'm always just checking to make sure the boat's not shifted back too much to crush the canoe. Makes it a bit of an added palaver but then again the canoe does come in handy for the odd chimney rescue mission so I've got to keep it on the payroll. Drop down the weed hatch number two. That one wasn't as bad. I just went through that tunnel, which inside it kind of looks like it's been dynamited out rather than excavated. It's all sort of like jagged rock and stuff like that. It's quite cool in there. Now I'm about to go through, hopefully, go up lock number 12, which hopefully will be my last lock of the day just because hopefully I'm just going to moor up after here well I'm kind of moored up I think that's as moored up as I'm going to get on this canal it's a bit too shallow to get any further in but that's all right I just saw that other boat and I thought better just moor up at the first sign of another boat just for the kind of safety and numbers effect of it if you don't hear any more from me today, it's because I've just gone to bed. It's holly moving day, but I'm accompanied by our friends D chaps. <laughs> I thought the camera was going to be directed at you. <laughs> <laughs> and today's treat so far for the propeller is a big old tarpaulin, I think. It's, it's not really for this reason, but we're actually taking holly in the opposite direction. I've chickened out of doing the Huddersfield Narrow with Holly. Oof. You look cool. You look like the Lenny Kravitz of the canal world. Well, that's my, my, my age, really. You kind of are, aren't you? <laughs> I think really my experience so far with the Huddersfield Narrow, not that I want to tar the whole canal with the same brush. Yeah. Hello. But it's pretty hard going and it, we couldn't really have William or, or Joe around for it. And I kind of don't really want to set us up uh, for a summer of opening the cafe on a canal that we can't really move around on together as a, fa as a family. It would make it too difficult really. So, we're changing our plans, turning back round and headed back towards Marple. The tactical retreat really is the 
Yeah. Deep Champs told me to listen to my gut, and uh, I did. And it told me to come back to where it was nice. <laughs> I'm just on my way back from boat move in Holly with Dan. We just left Holly down by Dan's boat. So hopefully Holly will be nice and safe there. And then Joe and William come back, I think tomorrow morning. Good morning. It's really nice bird song out here this morning, but I'm about to ruin all that, unfortunately. The engine's coming on and uh, I'm turning back around. <laughs> uh. Still just trying to turn around, I've been turning around for ages. <sighs> so like silty and just like not used this canal at all and like just like not dredged or anything that turning around here has just been seemingly like impossible like i've had to sort of combine these ropes so that they were long enough to get to the towpath and i canoed to the towpath and used the ropes to sort of get the get the boat this far around but now i'm just stuck completely but i'll say it now while i'm in this mood this is the worst canal that i've ever been on hands down and I'm sorry I know that might upset some people or something like that maybe people love this canal but it's not for me and there's no way that I would ever bring my family <laughs> anywhere near this canal or like my two boats and the, the little business that we've got and stuff like that I couldn't bring it up here I've been there uh, just sort of on this canal more or less for three days now and like Joe and William were supposed to come back yesterday, but they didn't because I just had to say, you know, what, like you, can't, you couldn't come back here. Like last night I was uh, kicking people off the boat, people were getting on the boat and I was having to get them off. I've got to go back and do some more of this ropes business now, but I think I've probably said enough anyway. I've had enough of this canal and as soon as I can turn around, I'll be glad to be leaving it. That's the honest truth. <laughs> I'm mostly turned around now. <laughs> it's going to happen. Whew. But the canoe's been an absolute lifesaver this trip. It would be great. Um, this would be exactly the kind of thing that I'd be up for if we were sort of two people in a boat. Because it is like really untraveled, this canal. I've seen one other boat. That's it in the whole time. Sometimes that's quite nice and it can feel like you know, you're making your way through the brush and stuff like that. But for us and what we're trying to do on the canals, it's not the place for it, unfortunately. So anyway, I'm heading back now, back down all 12 locks. This is where I moored last night, just there in front of that other boat, which is the only other moored boat that I've seen. <laughs> Um, and yeah, that's where, so there were some uh, kids that were getting on the boat and stuff. And I think they were just messing around. And when I, I didn't even tell them off to be honest, I just came out of the boat and they ran off. So it wasn't, uh, you know, I don't want to dra dram this up to more than it actually was. I know that they were just sort of bored kids messing around, but um, it's just the sort of hassle that I, could, I couldn't really do with uh, when William and Joe are on board. It's sort of all right if you're just on your own, but it does unsettle you a little bit. When you're in the boat, you're kind of like bunkered down. You can't really see what's going on. So uh, it's just a bit of a nuisance, really. So I'm really laying it all out there, guys. Now, this is my the honest, raw, uncut, especially because Joe was supposed to come back. She's taken the computer to work on her cookbook. It's Friday today, so she was supposed to come back and I was supposed to edit today. So if this video is late, 
now you, now you know the reason why. And also, don't get me wrong, uh, it's really nice landscape and stuff that this canal goes through and you can marvel at the engineering ability of being able to take a canal sort of trans-pennine like this. Even some of the little tunnels that I've been through already are like pretty formidable feats of human endeavour. But, you know, I've appreciated that now and it's time to go back <laughs> to where I feel like we could run a cafe and ha have a family. First lockdown, 11 locks and a lift bridge to go. Oops, 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 oops. Just leaving lock eight. So five locks down, seven to go. Strong early start, but it's anyone's game still at this early stage. You can tell how hardly used some of these locks are. This lock's more like jungle than lock at this stage. It's nice. I've learned my lesson, but not doing badly. I've just gone through lock number four. I've done nine locks, I've got three to go. And a lift bridge. The final lock. Huddersfield Narrow. It's been real. And I thank you for the experience. But no thanks. <laughs> do now is more up here temporarily go back and shut those gates and that's all my locks done for the day and that's it all my locks done now all I've got to do is make a little turning do that lift bridge again and I'm <laughs> I'm back now I'm just looking forward to meeting up with Joe and William again and seeing those guys. Back together again. So, uh, Joe's just texted me and Heron and William are just on the train to Marple, so I'm going to go there and meet them now. Order is restored. <laughs> William's had at least three tantrums about not getting bubbles. <laughs> bubble. Yeah, bubble. <laughs> but maybe we'll leave it here for this week. But thanks a lot for watching. And see you next week. Bye. bye. Big thanks to the Patreon bye. crew. Do you want to say bye, William? Bye. <laughs> <laughs>